Please welcome Matt, sorry, Daniel Drayton with this speech entitled Everyone Loves a Punt. Everyone Loves a Punt, Daniel Drayton. Everyone loves a punt back in Australia. Well, apparently, up to 80% of the population loves to have a flutter. A little gamble, possibly on the Melbourne Cup, possibly on the Pokies. I'll tell you an event I went to two months ago, which actually changed my opinion about gambling, and it actually shut down my, my gambling accounts based on my experience. I went to a charity event where we had David O'Neill of the Radio and TV, fantastic comedian, Dean Jones. Ozzy's in the room will remember Dean Jones, a very good batsman. We won't mention the Ashes tonight, so that'll be for another evening. Uh, but the person who most impressed me that evening was David Swartz, iconic Melbourne Demons man. Had 12 years for the Melbourne Demons. But what he's known for today is what's for SEN, his massive commentator, but also his gambling problem. Well, he lost allegedly over $4 million in a short space of time. And what we told everybody in the room that, that night was his best ever gambling day, he took out $2,000 from five friends, ended up with 30 at the Grand Casino. He'd gone from $2,000, built it up to $100,000, $250, and eventually won $500,000 in one day. He was elated, he went down to the casino, Hijacked a, 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 a bus, paid the guy thousand dollars to take him and his friends, his entourage down to the casino. One cut in the morning, lost a hundred thousand dollars cash, with the extra four thousand, uh, four hundred thousand dollars. Went down to Brighton, an estate agent in the early eighties, bought the house outright. But six months later, he actually lost the lot. He had to sell the house to pay his debts off, and this cycle carried on and on and on. And I thought, actually, I want to find again. I want to hunt. I started looking back through my life and my first bet was when I was 11 years old. Hello Dandy, 15 pence each way. Came home strong in the Grand National, the biggest uh, horse race in the UK. Came home, I remember being on the couch. The reason I bet on Hello Dandy is that Dan had a name. I was jumping on there going, get in there, go on, go on, get in there. I came home with three pounds that day. <laughs> so I went to secondary school. I learned how to pay penny up. So I got to the stage where I was playing with pound coins. Winning and losing, like a roller coaster. And then I got to the full scene. My granddad taught me how to work out fraction odds. You know, two to one on, seven to four, etc. I started doing accumulators. By the time I scored 16, I was well versed in gambling. And I could work out odds very quickly. 19, uh, just about to finish my apprenticeship, I lost a week's money in the casino on a spin of a wheel in London and uh, had to borrow money to get home at night from my friends uh, on a night bus. I went backpacking when I was 24 and I lost a few hundred dollars in the uh, Auckland Casino where I, I had a strategy as most uh, prosperous gamblers I think I had. I, I bet backed red for 10 spins, black came up, I lost hundreds. I was with my nan, my uh, aunts and uncles, we all met in New Zealand, and I was on my way around uh, Thailand, Australia, New Zealand, and a few other countries. Um, lost quite a lot of money as a backpacker. I then looked back at the influences of gambling, uh, and why I suppose I had a bit of a, uh, not an addiction, why I thought it was an addiction, but more a personality or behavioural trait. And I thought well, I was being prosperous all the time, but I look back and you can never beat the bookies. My dad always told me you can't beat the bookies and it goes back to his father, who I think when he carried his gene, he used to gamble with wages on a Friday afternoon and my mum and um, dad tell me stories of when my dad grew up, where on the Wednesday and Thursday they didn't eat in the house. So, 
I'm not too sure where that comes from, but I look back and kept thinking about the influences in my life, and it definitely was so it was family, um, probably culture back in the UK at the time. Also, advertising. Um, I look at the advertising today and I look at what's happening in Australia. Um, I'm not too sure if you know, but last year the government, according to the ATO, took $12 billion off gambling companies, and $3 billion of that came from pokies. And the biggest demographic of pokies is 18 to 24. Some of may surprise you. One in six poker players apparently have a habit, and they can spend up to $1,500 per week. Problem gamblers. What are the government doing about this? In my opinion, not a lot. So what I'd like you to think about tonight is do what I do. Is I'm going to stop gambling for at least a year. I'm not going to have a bet on a sweepstake. I'm not going to uh, go to the races. I won't have a pump. I'm just going to enjoy myself. The reason I'm doing that, I looked at myself just before Christmas after hearing David Sports. And I was sitting with my two children watching the races where I had, I had a bet. And I asked my kids to choose a horse. And I both chose horses and I backed the horses. And I did this all afternoon. And I thought, well, I'm doing the same thing which my granddad did. My dad did it because he had a bad experience. And I don't want to get to the point where I do have a sort of mad uh, afternoon or mad night where I, where I go for it and chase the money. As I have done in the age of 11, so I'm nearly 40 this year. So that's what I'm going, going to do. That's my New Year's resolution for myself. I'm going to try and carry that through at least at the end of the year and see how far I go. But that's my um, sort of making peace with myself, looking back for all those bad decisions and comes down to decision making through your life. I'm looking at you know, the government at the moment and the sport, the sports and events. I love sport. Everywhere you go, you see advertising. It's in your face. And unfortunately, what I, what I did find when I was doing searches on Google, anyone I was putting in searches, you know, how to help a gambler, Google AdWords were coming up with TD Waterhouse or Labrox. <laughs> so it's quite ironic. I was trying to search for help. So, maybe I was So, I'd like you to think about the next sweepstake you get asked to, to go in, or if you did not have a flutter, that's why I'm not going to preach to you today, but just think about the people around you, and maybe some children, similar to the adverts with, with drinking. Uh, thanks very much.